It turns out that for any particular temperature, you will have a fixed equilibrium ratio, and you can call that a constant, the equilibrium constant. So here we have an example of uh, nitrogen dioxide being turned into dinitrogen tetraoxide. It's in equilibrium. Remember, in the last chapter, we said K1 and K minus 1, but that was when we were considering the fact that we had multiple different steps that we were talking about, so we wanted to make sure it was very clear what step we were on. So forward and reverse are quite common to call these as well. The right forward would be considered to be K sub F for forward, and then the nitrogen dioxide concentration squared. The rate in reverse would be K sub R for reverse, and then the concentration of the dinitrogen tetraoxide. At equilibrium, these two rates are equal, so the numerical expressions for them are equal. We can rearrange this formula to make KF over KR, and that would then put all of the concentrations on one side, and then by definition, this equilibrium constant, capital K with no subscripts, is defined to be the ratio of Kf to Kr. And then it turns out that you can use the concentrations to develop it. It does not tell you anything about how quickly equilibrium is reached. This number will change with temperature. That's why we have this picture over here. Both of these are the same thing. They've been filled with the gases. But at the warmer temperature, you see the more vivid color of one of the reactants. And at the colder temperature, you see the lighter color of the other side. So what's going on when we're doing a chemical equilibrium? We're gonna set it up as the value of the ratio of concentration at a specific temperature. Now, it turns out that often we're working with things that are entirely gases, so we could also do this with a ratio of partial pressures. These ratios are going to have their terms raised to a power that's equal to the coefficient of the substance in the balanced chemical equation. Equilibria are inherently reversible because you're talking about something where there is a reaction rate in both directions, so they are reversible. And they tell you nothing about how fast that they will end up coming into existence. So equilibrium constants never have units. So we have a value here of K at 500 Kelvin, and we're told that it's 4.0 times 10 to the 18th. What does it stand for? Well, let's write down what we said it was, first of all, and then let's talk about what it means. It's Kf over Kr. That's definitional. So that means that the forward direction must happen much more quickly. That rate is much higher than the reverse direction. So I can look at that and say, oh, if the forward rate is really huge, then it means I'm going to end up with lots of product compared to my reactants. Then I see that the products are here on top. The HCl is on top. It, the concentration is squared to match the coefficient here in the equation. And then the reactants, the hydrogen and the chlorine gases, are down here. So this is what that K means. We also have a second one here, just so we can look at a different one. And notice here we have nitrogen and oxygen gases and they will make nitrogen monoxide. This is the value of the equilibrium constant at 800 Kelvin, and still it is tiny, 10 to the minus 21. Let's see what that looks like. It's still gonna be Kf over Kr. Well, in this case, since this is a minus 21, it means the forward reaction is very, very small compared to the rate of the reverse reaction which is a darn good thing since we live on a planet where the atmosphere is almost all nitrogen and oxygen. We wouldn't want it to be turning into nitrogen monoxide. And so we see when we write down this, that this will be a much smaller number than these come up to be. So we have two different things. When we see a big K like this, we know that products are favored. 
we're going to end up with lots of products and use up almost all of the reactants. On the other hand, here we have one where the Kf is going to be much, much smaller than the Kr, and that means that the reactants are favored. We hardly ever encounter spontaneously created nitrogen monoxide because the rate of reaction just isn't in its favor.